Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to take a look back at Alpine Linux. There's been a number of questions from people about trying to get Docker to install under Alpine. There's been some problems that they've had, and so I thought I would do a run-through with you today and show you how to get Docker running on Alpine right after this. So to get started today, I'm going to be using uh, the GNU boxes, and um, I'm going to start out by ins installing a, uh, a new virtual machine, and we'll go down and select the file that we want, go to the Downloads folder, and we'll choose Alpine. Now, this is the latest release of Alpine. This is version 3.11, and that was released on the 24th of December. So... It's possible that they may have fixed some bugs that were causing maybe some of the issues, but I'll show you some of the tricks I use in order to install Docker on this to keep it so that it works. Now, I'm going to give this quite a bit more memory than it will ever need, at least for today, but and, and quite a bit of disk. I plan on, I'm going to keep this around and, and, and use it, so uh, I'm going to give it enough room where I can do some work in it as well. So I'll go ahead and create that. And it'll start up. This won't take a whole lot of time, as you know from the previous video, if you watched it, that Alpine is very small, very uh, compact, and very fast. So I'm going to go ahead and log in as root. And the next step I want to do is to execute set up Alpine, as it, as it suggests right here, uh, to set up Alpine. So we'll do that and the first question is what kind of keyboard do I have I have a US keyboard it's a US variant uh, I'm gonna call this Alpine 1 and yes Ethernet 0 is the default port here and I'll use DHCP for this I don't have anything special for the network that I need to do um, for this elite for this install and then it's asking me to give root a password which I'll do <clears throat> and now it's asking me for the time zone, which UTC is fine. Uh, do I have a proxy? No. I'm going to use Crony to do uh, my time services. And we'll let that service get started. And now it's asking me for which mirror I want to use. Now, I know from running this in the previous uh, <laughs> install that number one was the fastest for me. You might want to do the F option and let it run through that. It'll take some time, but it'll ping all those mirrors and it'll find which one is fastest for you. So I'm going to go ahead and pick one. Open SSH is fine. I'm going to install this to SDA, which is the first drive that's available. And I'm going to use Sys for this. Sys allows me to create a regular file system. Now, by default, if, if you were to choose data or one of the other options here, it'll run uh, Alpine out of memory, and that's immutable. So when you restart, any changes you made, if you didn't back up, do an LBRU backup uh, to preserve your changes, they're gone. So I want to, because I'm running Docker, I want to, I kind of like to keep those changes around. So I'm just going to create a regular file system for this. Um, do I want to erase? Yes, I want to erase and create the file system. And it'll go ahead and, st and start building out that, that particular system for me. And it'll start, and, and it goes to do the bootloader last, as always. And it's complete, and we can reboot this now. Now, normally I would, if, if because of the ISO being mounted, normally I would do a power off uh, and then I would remove the ISO. But Alpine seems to do a pretty good job of, of seeing that <laughs> that's in there and it, it kind of ignores it. So the first thing I want to do right now is take a look at the instructions on what I need to do here. So uh, they start out by having you do an APK add Docker I wouldn't do that because your community is, by default, in Alpine is not enabled. And Docker is a community package. So you'll need to add this to uh, the file in Etsy APK repositories in order for that to do that. They're recommending that you choose the latest stable community. 
I wouldn't do that. And the reason why I wouldn't do that is because any updates could be pulling a newer version of Docker than the version of Alpine that you're currently running. So I'll show you what I do. I, I don't do this because you could run into, you could have a, a package synchronization problem between Docker and the version of Alpine. So I'll show you what I'm going to do there. And then you install the Docker, then you do the uh, uh, RC update, add Docker boot, and then you start the service. These instructions here for doing the kernel uh, parameter changes aren't needed anymore, so don't do that. Uh, if you're running a, a, an older version of Alpine that says here 3.4x or, or older, then you would want to use those a, in order to get around an issue with it coming back with a security error. So, yeah, let's, let's go back into boxes. It's already up and running here. Uh, while we were talking, it restarted. So I'll go ahead and enter root. And the first thing I always do is an APK update, and that then brings down any any new packages that are available. And yeah, there's quite a few. So APK, and then I'll do an upgrade uh, to that, and it's done. So 138 packages. Yeah, you probably remember that from the last time. Alpine is very fast on doing updates. And I'm going to go ahead and reboot just in case any of the services were renewed. I don't know what was in those updates. I did not pay any attention to what was there. Uh, or nor did I look at the logs to see what it installed. So I just go ahead and reboot. Doesn't take that long. <clears throat> I'm waiting for the services to come up. Those are always the slowest. And we'll enter my password again. And then I'll show you what I do. I'm going to go to a Etsy APK. And I'm, I'm going to edit the uh, repo directory, or excuse me, file. And down here, you'll notice that the community is a little different. It says actually has the version in it. So in this particular instance, the packages in 3.11 will be the one it's looking for, and those match with main. So if you do upgrade the version of your Alpine, you'll want to go back in here and then make those changes so that they're consistent. Uh, but the, And then you do an APK update, and then we'll do an APK add Docker. Oh, APK add Docker. There we go. All right, so that's all done. So the next step I need to do here is this RC add, this RC a, uh, update add Docker boot. So we'll do that. And then I'll want to start the service. So, and it's been added. And then we'll do a service Docker start. Then uh, at this point, I should be able to do a Docker help. And I, at least I'm getting some information back. I could do a Docker PS just to make sure it's working. So, uh, but to really make sure that it's running, let's do a, a run hello world. That way it's downloading from the repo and then it's running it. And as you can see here, it's working just fine. So yeah, not really complicated to do. Um, but let's, let's see. Let's do, so about 170 meg is being used uh, in memory. And then, <laughs> so I've got quite a bit of headroom here for installing Docker applications and containers. Uh, I, I could put Docker Compose out. Um, I'm not going to do that. I do my compositions over on another machine. Uh, but you may choose to do that. Um, I'm just not sure how well that's going to work because um, Python 2 is going away. And the Docker Compose scripts, as far as I know, have not been updated to Docker to uh, Python 3 yet. So, uh, I, yeah, I hope they get that done soon. But, yeah, if you look at the instructions here for Compose, uh, they're definitely putting out Python 2. So, yeah, I don't know. I hope, they, uh, I hope, they, uh, I hope the uh, Docker folks uh, take care of that problem. But uh, so, you know, basically... Basically, that's it. Um, one thing I was going to tell you is um, 
just keep the versions the same. They just you run into a lot less trouble that way uh, on any on any distribution for that matter, not just Alpine. But uh, yeah, it's not a very difficult thing to do. So with that, I think I'll just keep this video really short today. Wanted to wish you all a happy new year and a shout out to uh, Penguin Revolution who solved, I think, solved the problem with the uh, screen tearing for me. Um, he reminded me that, uh, <laughs> that Gnome was using Wayland. I thought I had gotten rid of that, and after I installed uh, a 3.1 update, it put it back into Wayland. So, yeah, I went back and, re and revisited that, and uh, sure enough, Wayland was back running again. Wayland is uh, troublesome. And uh, so, anyway, hope you enjoyed this today. Thank you, Penguin. Happy, uh, happy New Year to you all. Hope to see you again real soon. Please like and subscribe, and bye for now.